Hey everyone, welcome to another week of Fallout 4 Mods. We got a pretty good collection this week, so let's get into it. Personal Assault Weapon by Shark Splitter. This is a Nifscope Edit Weapon that is pretty versatile and allows you to load different rounds when modified. The different round types are Slug, Flechette, Grenade, Delayed Grenade, Sticky Grenade, Incendiary Charge, Proximity Charge, and Cluster Grenade. You've also got your choice of three barrels, three stocks, five mags, seven scopes, five color presets, and semi-auto or full auto options. This is a nice gun that's small but can pack a punch at the same time. Colt Python by Kovadanga. This is another fancy weapon from Kovadanga. This beautiful revolver is a custom mesh and texture along with a custom sound effect too. Ooh. There are five receivers, four barrels, one grip, and two sights. Fantastic weapon and great sidearm for any armory. Star Wars Blast Tech E11 by D Magnus. This brings the iconic blaster from Star Wars into your game, along with the sound effect to top it off. You've also got 12 receivers, split between semi-auto and full. Then split between each of those, you have times four, times six, or night vision scope, and you've got times four, times six night vision scope as well. There's a folded and open stock. And in the scope section, there's a columnar module which allows for more accurate and powerful blasts for when you're shooting the baddies. M1918 BAR Redux by Kovadanga. So Kovadanga had already made a 1918 BAR, but Kova was like, this isn't good enough. I'm, I'm just going to make the whole thing over again. So this is a, uh, this is a, a redo, a redux of the 1918 from Kovadanga. You've got 15 receivers. Five barrels, two stocks, three mags, two sights, and two bipod options. The texture is pretty nice and overall a great weapon. DKS 501 Sniper Rifle. The iconic Fallout weapon makes a much needed return to the Commonwealth and with some pretty nice variation with mods as well. You got seven receivers. Four barrels, four stocks, six mags, eleven scopes, four muzzles, and two materials. You've got standard and ballistic fiber weave. Everything about this weapon is fantastic. It looks like it came with the game, but with better textures. Really good looking weapon, and it's good to finally have it back in the game. Proximity grenades by Bwins95. So I don't like throwing mines because they don't go very far, but with proximity grenades, that's not much of a problem. So now you can create any type of mine, but in proximity grenade form. To create one, you'll need a grenade and a mine version of the same type and some adhesive. Just slam it together, and there you go. And uh, this works for any type of mine. So there's a proximity nuke grenade, there's a proximity uh, plasma grenade. Just everything that is a mine can now be a proximity grenade. And like I said, I enjoy this because the distance you get when throwing mines is just so short that this is just a huge improvement. High Heels by Lazman555. That's right, everyone. It's time to get dressed up and head to the... Oh, oh my God. Oh, do not try this if you have a male... Oh, Jesus. Just get... switch. Switch gender. Okay. Okay, so these are high heels, anyone. Uh, when you put this on, you can only wear it with armor that goes over regular clothing, so like the chest pieces and the armor pieces. Uh, you can't use this with any item like a dress or a shirt and pants because, according to the mod author, I haven't really delved into Fallout 4 modding, but apparently Lasman said the way Fallout 4 does textures are the feet are not separate, which I'm guessing means like the feet take up the same slot as, you know, clothing, so you can't have them both. But basically, you can wear it with any type of armor that goes over, like I said, so you know, either wear armor, or you just be naked. And, you know, I think some people will be okay. Just don't put it on. Don't put it on if you're a guy, though. Oh, oh, here it is. It's back. Oh, get away. Get it. It's coming for us. Enclave Colonel Uniform by the Mine King. This is a retexture of the Corsair Uniform and the Brotherhood of Steel hat. You've got four different colors to choose from. White, gray, tan, and black. The uniform has a bullet resistance of 50, energy resistance of 25, and radiation resistance of 20, and it also has an endurance and perception of plus one. 
The hat has a ballistic and energy resistance of 5. Currently, the only little thing is the Brotherhood of Steel logo is still a little bit visible, just very faintly. Uh, the mod author has mentioned that this is a future fix, but I figured since I noticed it, might as well just put it out there. Um, but yeah, I like this. Good stuff. Captain America Power Armor by Nice Guy Henry. Yeah, such a nice guy, Henry. So, time to celebrate the 4th of July, or the 5th, in style with this Captain America paint job. This is available for the T-51, T-60, and the X-01 Power Armor, and it is labeled as the Star's motherfucking firework. You know what? It's, it's per- it's- it should be in there. Get in here, firework sound. It's labeled as the Star Spangled Man paint, is what I was gonna say before the fireworks went off. Each piece painted gives plus one to charisma, and it shows. God bless you, Metal Metal Man. Submersible Power Armor, Bioshock inspired by Edible Grenade 12 and Unoctium. This is a fantastic standalone power armor, and the inspiration from Bioshock really stands out and takes this to the next level. The power armor is found by following the clues from a note in Diamond City, and from there, when you get the parts, just apply them to any power armor rig of your choice and get to explore on the seas. There are two different helmets in which you can install the submersible rebreather, which increases your oxygen supply while underwater. And there's also the marine foils for your legs for increased movement speed underwater as well. This looks amazing and totally looks like it could have come straight out of Bioshock. Great work. The Tailgater by Mellow Traumatic. This is a small truck trailer that's been spruced up to be a beautiful home. Outside, you've got a power armor workbench, and inside, you've got every type of workbench you'll need. You've also got a kitchen, bedroom, plenty of storage, and a working TV. Sort of. Not really. It's also nav mesh, so feel free to bring all your friends over. Mmm. Alien Elvis. <laughs> By Skinny Tech Boy. Alien Elvis is a fully voiced standalone companion, and he's got the hair to prove it. When a man is lost, the first thing you do is look inside a bottle. You can find him at the third rail, hanging out if you want him to join along for your adventures. There are over 200 lines of dialogue with some singing as well. You also get an Elvis controller, which will help you summon Elvis, set follow distance, and toggle whether or not he can be killed. When things go wrong, I don't go with them. I really like this mod. Alien Elvis is fantastic. He's uh, pretty funny too, and a uh, good companion all around. Varied Raiders by Cthulhu and Me. Cthulhu and Me! This adds 75 new NPC faces that will be added to the spawn lists of raiders, addicts, and general hooligans in the wastes. In vanilla, the amount of variation for faces of raiders was pretty low, so this is a definite plus for immersion. The faces are unique, and it's nice to see some new ones right before you blow them away. Sorry about your beautiful faces, everyone. Fallout 4 HD reworked project revised by Hulk Hogan PL. Basically, this is a retexture for a number of items in the game. This mod also doesn't put a huge dent in your performance as small things such as cups and bottles do not have huge 4K or 2K textures. Most of the items that are redone are small, miscellaneous objects such as toilets, road cones, tires, boxes. This is very well done and uh, hopefully we'll get more of these retexture packs because these are always great. Scaver by Thorold GM. Scaver is an NPC that roams the wastes collecting junk, using whatever he finds, and even constructing his own settlement. Scaver is an experiment in trying to create a truly immersive, smart, and aware NPC. He'll also wear protective gear in rad storms, grow a beard, and can teach perks as well. This is a really awesome mod, and I like the fact that this NPC actually explores and kind of carves his own area in the world. Kind of like a second player, actually, so. Very cool stuff, and impressive scripting as well. Rebuild, modular sanctuary pre-war and post-war set by Parcel Studio and Games. This adds two new categories of both pre-war and post-war building sets, which are added to the metal category. These will allow you to build whatever house of your dreams in no time. For the floor, every type for a beautiful house is available, as seen here. For exterior wall colors, you have blue, yellow, red, and green. Then you've got your interior walls to set up your rooms. This includes doorways, regular walls, and walls with bookshelves. And under the miscellaneous section, you've got half railings, corners, gaps, and garage beam pieces. This mod really speeds up building a structure with the pre-war style, and it's easy as well. Automa Throne, drivable by Bwones. You king of the castle, jump on your ride. It's time to travel, I'll see ya. Goodbye. That's right, the Automa Throne is a drivable vehicle that is in the very early stages of development, but definitely looks to have a bright future. 
So you can find it near Vault 111, just sitting there. To enter or exit, just run up to it and hit the E button. Currently, it only works in third-person mode, but I think that's just fine. Hopefully, Bones will keep updating this mod because this works pretty well um, just as it is. And you can definitely get around quick, and this would be really cool for survival and stuff. And definitely, if, like, you don't know, Bones added, like, you have to add gas to it and stuff like that. I definitely think this can be a great mod, especially with, you know, adding weapons or changing the paint. And I think a lot can be done, so be keeping an eye out for this one. Stingray Air Support by Undivide. You can now call in your very own personal airstrike with the throw of a flare, huh, and a selection of destruction. The choices for your payload are Nuclear Bomb, Merv, EMP, Cryo, or a Supply Drop. Supply Drop has a ton of ammo and some other essential supplies. There's a voiceover to tell you when the airstrike's coming, when the payload is dropped, and when the Stingray is ready to be used again. This can be turned off if you don't like it under the options in the Stingray menu. There's also an uninstall mod option, which is very close to the cancel button. And I thought it was kind of odd to just have an uninstall button in the mod. But I guess it makes sense. I mean, if you install the mod manually, it's a quicker way. But thankfully, if you do select it, there is a are you sure prompt, which is a definite good idea. So get your flares out and start blowing up the Commonwealth. Oh, yeah. We is my week. MLP Pony Plushie Mod by Toenail. Please don't start a flame war in the comments. That's That'd be great. Thank you very much. The invasion's begun. The pony party's here. So, this, uh, this mod adds, uh, as you can see, six ponies into the game, which will replace the kickball, deflated kickball, toy alien, toy car, toy truck, and toy rockets. So no more toys. Little baby, little baby ponies now. So basically, whenever you would find one of those objects I just listed, you'll find a pony plushie instead. Now, I'm not a fan of MLP, but this looked like an out there mod, and I thought, why not? Maybe not weird for those of us who don't watch the show, but no, no, wait, it is weird. You know what I mean. Regardless, don't start a fight in the comments. Well, Tom of Throne will murder you. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for this week's Fallout 4 mods. Hope you enjoyed. So, as usual, if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments, and I will check them out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have a great week, and I shall see you in the future. Away.